So Ozempic and the other GLP-1 medications can be used for managing type 2 diabetes. In fact, they have the indication from FDA and Health Canada. However, a big question that I often get asked is, can we also use them in managing type 1 diabetes? Well, let's find out. Welcome back to the program, you beautiful people. My name is Dr. Dan. I am a pharmacist turned obesity expert. And of course, before I dive into things, I need you to hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on your notifications so that you never miss another episode when I put one out. As well, check me out on my other channels at the official Dr. Dan. And if you are looking for some support in your weight management journey, please check out my website, healthevolved.co, where you can book a consultation with myself and we can see if you are a good fit for our weight management program. Now, most often when an individual says that they have diabetes, what they really mean is they have type 2 diabetes, which at present is the most common form of diabetes in the world. Type 1 diabetes is still a relatively common condition and affects millions of people worldwide and like every other disease on the planet, is due to a number of genetic and environmental factors. It does have some key differences compared to type 2 diabetes. And just a fun little fact, or at least what I think is fun, most of you have probably only heard of type 1 and type 2 diabetes, but in fact there are seven different types of diabetes that an individual can develop. You can, you can take that one and, and tell it at your dinner parties and, and such, yeah. Anywho, let me give you a really brief rundown as to what is going on in terms of type 1 diabetes. So, what we have in our body is an organ called the pancreas, and the pancreas produces two different kinds of hormones that help to manage the sugar in our blood. We have one, which is insulin, and what insulin does is it helps to bring your blood sugar levels down. The second hormone is called glucagon, which helps to bring the sugar level in your blood up. Now, this whole blood sugar thing in individuals that don't have diabetes is all tightly re regulated and ensures that you and I can continue doing the things that we do and don't just pass out and die because our blood sugar levels go too low. The cells that produce insulin in our body are called beta cells. In individuals that have type 2 diabetes, what essentially is occurring is their beta cells are still present, they're still producing some insulin, but they're fighting things like insulin resistance and their beta cells just aren't functioning as optimally. The key difference with individuals that have type 1 diabetes is that their beta cells, well, are just non-existent. And the reason for that is because, well, their immune system just kind of woke up one day, a little bit cranky, maybe didn't sleep very well, maybe they're partying too much the night before and are a little hungover, we don't, we don't judge on this channel. For whatever reason, they decide that, hey, you know what? This beta cell is, is giving me a funny look. I don't like it. And so I'm going to take it out. And fortunately and unfortunately, when the immune system gets something on its mind and decides it wants to take something out, it's very effective at doing that. When it comes to infections, that's, that's a great thing. That keeps us alive and doing what we need to do in a day to day. But when it comes to attacking our own body, well, that is kind of bad news bears. And so what eventually happens is individuals in type 1 diabetes basically get all of their beta cells wiped out and they can no longer produce insulin and therefore they become what's called insulin dependent. What that means is they have to inject insulin multiple times a day with various long acting, short acting, or if they're on a pump, they just have a continuous level of insulin going into the body in order to help them to manage their blood sugars. And if they don't inject their insulin, well, they ultimately end up dying. Individuals that have type 2 diabetes can also be on insulin. However, they are also likely on a variety of other medications prior to or in conjunction with their insulin. And these medications might be like metformin, Jardians, glycolyzide, 
Ozempic, Trulicity, and that sort of thing. Basically, in type 2 diabetes, they are given all of these other medications in order to help what insulin is produced by their body to act more effectively or to produce more of it in order to manage their blood sugars. So it's kind of working with whatever residual beta cell function they have left, where again, the type 1 diabetes individuals have no beta cells, so there's no support that can be provided. They need to inject insulin in order to manage their blood sugars. So the first question that I want to answer here is why are the GLP-1 medications not currently used or at least don't have the indication for helping manage blood sugars in type 1 diabetes? And the first reason here is that overall they're not overly effective or not going to be overly effective and that's because the GLP-1 receptor agonist medications when they help in managing blood sugars, one of the main things that they do is they go to the pancreas and help support, make the pancreas more efficient, whatever you want to look at it as. They help that pancreas to produce more insulin and in individuals that have type 2 diabetes, well, that, that can lead to some pretty substantial decreases in blood sugar levels. In fact, we see A1C reductions of up to 2%. But in individuals that have type 1 diabetes, well, their pancreas doesn't produce any insulin, so there's no pancreas or insulin production to support, and so the blood sugar lowering effect isn't going to be all that great. Now, the GLP-1 medications do help to lower blood sugars in other ways, but on average, the studies have shown that when it comes to adding a GLP-1 medication to an individual's regimen that has type 1 diabetes, we only see about a 0.7% reduction in A1C compared to that 2% reduction that happens in type 2 diabetes. The other big concern, at least initially, that we had with using a GLP-1 medication in type 1 diabetes was the development of hypoglycemia and a condition called diabetic ketoacidosis. If you have type 1 diabetes and you have never heard of diabetic ketoacidosis or DKA, please, please go to the link in the article down below and um, go and read that and read up on what DKA is. And then please follow up with your healthcare providers to come up with an action plan as to how to mitigate and manage it because DKA is a bad news bears and can potentially be life-threatening. Individuals that have type 1 diabetes are already at a much higher risk of developing hypoglycemia because they're directly on insulin and also developing DKA because, again, they have issues where they need to have insulin injected into the body and if they miss doses and that sort of thing, there's a whole bunch of other complex physiology that I won't get into here, but they're at a much higher risk of developing it compared to type 2 diabetes. And so when the GLP-1 medications first came to market and we first started doing research around them, we really had this off-balance risk-benefit analysis in front of us. We had kind of a marginal benefit in terms of managing blood sugar levels, and then we had this really, really high-risk potential of leading to death. And so for your family physician and just general clinicians, you know, they're not really waking up each morning and saying, Today is the day that I would like to be sued. And therefore, they really didn't see the benefits outweighing the potential risk of that DKA and hypoglycemia. However, as with all fantastic and great things about our world, we do more science and we get more data and information to really tease out what is the true benefit versus the risk that comes with the GLP-1 medications. And so, to the crux of the matter, can we use GLP-1 medications in type 1 diabetes? And the short answer is yes, we can. As I said above, the FDA and Health Canada haven't approved it for type 1 diabetes, and I don't know if they ever will. But we now have a lot of good data to show that not only can the GLP-1 medications be beneficial, but they actually seem to be quite safe as well. In terms of managing blood sugars, as I've already mentioned, we see about a 0.7% reduction in A1C. So not great, but not too shabby on the other end of things either. In terms of weight loss, which a lot of individuals who have type 1 diabetes, they struggle with their weight, so can we use it in these people? Yes, yes we can. 
And in fact, depending on the review that you look at, some individuals were losing anywhere from seven to 10 pounds from their baseline. Now, as a really quick caveat so that I don't get sued and get you know my butt taken to court and stuff, I do need to note that if you do have type one diabetes and you happen to get prescribed a GLP-1 medication, please, 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 do not come off of your insulin ever because you will not live and will not survive. Please continue to work with your diabetes educator and with your physician and every other clinician on your care team and such. So make sure you're staying on these met your insulin because it's very, very important for you to live. However, you might need to adjust your insulin if say you get the benefits of weight loss or blood sugar lowering with the GLP-1 medications. Again, please follow up with your care team. In terms of safety, because I'm sure that is one of the main things that many of you are concerned about, is there actually an increased risk of DKA and hypoglycemia? And great news, there actually is no increased risk of DKA or hypoglycemia. This is obviously pretty darn cool, but not necessarily unexpected. And the reason for that is because the mechanism by which the GLP-1 medications help to lower our blood sugar levels is what we call glucose dependent. And so what that means is that there has to be an elevated level of sugar or glucose in your bloodstream, or at least a level that's rising or above what the normal ranges are, before that mechanism that the GLP-1 medication uses to manage blood sugars actually kicks in. And so when your blood sugars are within that normal range, what ends up happening is the GLP-1 medication mechanism of action for managing blood sugars is not working. Therefore, it will not continue to push your blood sugar levels down inappropriately when it shouldn't be. Now, of course, you're still taking insulin. That definitely still can manage and affect your blood sugar levels, so continued monitoring is absolutely necessary. In summary, despite a rebellious immune system, it looks like the GLP-1 medications can not only be effective in helping to manage type 1 diabetes, not only from the blood sugar aspect of things, but also from the weight management perspective of things, it also looks like they are relatively safe in that they don't seem to increase the risk of DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis, or hypoglycemia. Now, of course, again, just because I want to reiterate and make sure I've kicked this horse good and dead, you need to continue monitoring your blood sugar levels and continuing to adjust and manage your insulin Further, in order to get it to help with the weight management side of things, you of course need to make the necessary lifestyle modifications. And as always, in order to lose weight, it is absolutely critical you get yourself into a calorie deficit consistently. So if you have type one diabetes and you're interested in potentially adding on a GLP-1 medication, whether it's Ozempic, Wagovi, Mangero, or what have you, be sure to, care, to talk with your care team and potentially and very likely your endocrinologist to see if it would be the right fit for you. If you're looking for a paper or two to potentially discuss with them or just for your general reading and to nerd out on, check out the links down below. So until next time, my friends, don't forget to check me out on my other channels at the official Dr. Dan. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below so you don't miss another episode when it comes out. And of course, check out my website, healthevolve.co, if you want some help along your weight management journey. And finally, always remember that small tweaks lead to massive peaks.